Hey there, it's Simon Hurley from Inclipse and welcome to another video. Now in today's video, I'm focusing mainly on this Nuvo Clear Glimmer Paste. This stuff can be so much fun. And I'm going to be showing two different cards, um, kind of adding different colorants to the Glimmer Paste, two different ways to create some really fun and unique backgrounds. So I hope you guys really enjoy this video and learn a little bit more about how to get a little bit more use out of your Clear Glitter Paste. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by sharing a really easy way to add some super vibrant colors to your glimmer paste. So this is gonna make your colors really pop and stand out on your cards. So I'm taking a piece of craft card stock here and I'm going to add this little strip stencil from Nuvo down onto my work surface. Now I like these little strip stencils, that way if you don't wanna do a full background, especially with a glimmer paste or something like this, you can do a strip down the background and make that be your focal point. So I'm going to take some of this clear glimmer paste and make sure it's all nice and mixed together. And then I'll take a little bit and put it on my glass mat. So this is really nice to work with. You can kind of use it as a palette and it's super easy to clean later. So then I'm going to take some Distress Oxides and I'll add lots of that ink down and take the rest of this paste and mix it all in with that. So you'll see I used lots of that ink and also since it's that dye pigment fusion, that pigment ink really gives it a ton of color there. So you can really work and add less or more ink depending on how vibrant you want the colors to be. Now I wanted the colors to be super vibrant today so I added lots of that um, pigment and it really made them super nice and vibrant for on top of these craft card stock here. So now I'm going to take my palette knife and spread that right through my stencil. Now a little bit of this stuff goes a long way so you can see I started at the top there and I'm adding my glimmer paste down. And then as I work it through that stencil, there's more on my palette knife, so I can just spread that right down and through the stencil. So then I'll take the next color, which is fossilized amber here, and I'm going to mix that together too. So I, again, I added lots of this color down, and you get that super bright yellow color. Now I picked these colors pretty strategically, and you'll see why in just a second here. When I take this yellow and put it right onto the surface of my stencil here, you can see that as I kind of mix these two colors together, it'll create a little bit of an orange color right in between them. And also, I just really like how these colors look together, so that's kind of another reason why I chose them. But I also like how this um, glimmer paste has kind of some different colors of glitter in it too. And you'll see that especially with the next card, especially um, when you add color to it, it kind of tones down that glitter a little bit since it's super vibrant, but it still has that nice shimmer and shine to it. So then after I've added that yellow paste onto that background, I'll smooth that all out and then finish it off with my last color. So this one is that Peacock Feathers color. I'll take a little bit more of that Glimmer paste, and then I can mix this all together to get that nice vibrant bluish kind of turquoise color. And again, I chose this color um, you know, pretty strategically too. I like these three colors mixed together and it creates kind of a rainbow. So when these, uh, this teal kind of blue color mixes together with that yellow, it'll create a nice green color right in between there. And again, I also just really like how these three look together too. I think it creates a really nice color scheme and it looks really great on top of that craft card stock too. So after I'm doing that, I'm going to spread my palette knife over top of all this to smooth it out and kind of mix all those colors together a little bit more and you can see I'm wiping off some of the excess to the side. So then I'll lift this off and you get that nice final reveal there and I really love how that contrasts against the craft card stock there. And then there's always a little bit on top and on bottom too um, when you're going off the edge of a piece of card stock like that. And since this is straight on the card base, I just wiped that portion off. Now to clean my stencil, you could use like a scrubber or things like that to really get intense and get all this stuff off. I just kind of wipe it off with a paper towel and some stamp cleaner and it comes off pretty nicely on there too. But again, you could definitely use some more harsh cleaners. So then it's pretty easy to clean the little glass mat too and I'll clean that all off. Now to finish this card off, I'm using a neat and tangled set and this has this fun, scripty, grateful sentiment in it. So I'm going to cut this out with a little bit of a white border around it. I'm sure there's probably dies for these two, but I just have the little stamp set. So I don't mind cutting around it. And then I'm going to add some foam tape onto the back and I'm adding lots of Nuvo adhesive onto the back of this too. Now the reason for that is because the foam tape doesn't stick super well to that glimmer paste. So adding that adhesive will ensure that it goes right down into all the cracks and crevices and sticks to that glimmer paste and the cardstock. 
Now in that same stamp set, there was these leaves and acorns, and I thought it was the perfect time to start creating fall and Thanksgiving kind of cards. So I'm gonna stamp these down onto my cardstock using that Nouveau Hybrid ink. So this is a great ink for Copic coloring, and I'll just bring in my Copic markers and do some quick and simple shading on these little leaves. So I'm just adding a darker color right in between where those little veins of the leaves are. And then I'm going in with the lighter color and just blending that whole thing out. You can also go back in with that darker color and finish it off by just outlining those veins one more time. Now I colored these in with some super bright colors to kind of match the same colors that I used for the stenciling. But you could use whatever colors you want and I think it would look super awesome. These aren't necessarily like super fall colors that I use on this card, but I think it definitely is a fall card and it's super fun to create with kind of non-traditional colors, I would say. So after I've colored those two leaves in, I'm going to uh, cut them out with some scissors again, just the same way that I did that sentiment. So leaving a little bit of a white border around them. And then I'm taking that Nubo adhesive again and just adding it onto the back of those leaves and sticking those down onto the card. After I've made sure that I love how they look, then I can start adhering them down. Now that'll ensure that they stick really nicely onto the card and stick to that glimmer paste too, because I'm using that liquid adhesive. So when you've got anything that's raised like this on your card, you wanna make sure you use that liquid adhesive and it'll stick really super nice because the glue will kind of seep into those little areas. So after I'm done with that, here's how that card looks up close. I've stamped a couple other things from that same neat and tangled stamp set, and I really love how that fun, stenciled, vibrant background looks. So now moving on to this next card is another fun way to add a little bit more of a subtle color to the back of this glimmer paste. So I'm going to take one of these Tonic Studio stencils again. I'm adding my little card base down. This is a tomato soup card base from Gina K. And I've added that down with some tape, and then I'll use some purple tape to tape down the stencil too. So this is more of a multi-step process for this one. So I'm taking my Distress Oxide inks in some more traditional fall colors. So for this one, I'm using some oranges, reds, greens, and yellows. And I'm going to just bring this in onto the cardstock. So I'm going to just blend this right through that stencil like I usually would, except this time I'm really adding lots of ink. I wanna pile it on the ink to make sure that I have a really nice dark and saturated color. And that way when we move it onto the next step, you will still be able to see the colors pretty nicely. So I'm going to then blend in some fossilized amber and really lay these colors down next to each other. Now I'm using this tomato soup base cardstock because I really like it and the contrast that it adds with those colors. And also it's a really great fall color, but you definitely could do this on white cardstock too. You'd probably get a little bit more of a contrast against the white cardstock with all these colors. But I decided that this um, orange tomato soup kind of card base would look really nice for this fall card. So then I'm last but not least going in with some aged mahogany ink here, and I really like this dark red color, and I think it really finishes off that background super nicely. So once I'm done doing that, I'm going to then lift up this stencil to reveal my really fun background that I've created underneath. So we've blended all those colors together, and you could see those fun colors on that background there. I love how that looks. But then I'm going to take my rag and wipe off this stencil, make sure it's nice and clean, and then I'll take this and adhere it right back over top of that background. So I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and lined up with those designs again. Uh, you just wanted a nice clean surface so that when we move on to the next step, it doesn't get all smeared. So after I've adhered that stencil back down over top, I'm gonna to take this same kind of clear glitter paste from Nuvo, and I'm going to take a little bit of it at a time and put it right through that stencil there, right on top of all the colors that we just created. So what this is going to do is this is just going to add a coating of glitter right over top of all those colors and create a really fun and shimmery background. Now this glimmer paste has some kind of holographic different kind of colors of glitters in it. So as I spread this over top, you can see that it'll kind of reflect whatever colors underneath. And you'll see that a little bit more later too. So you can really see it reflecting the greens and the oranges and that nice dark red color too once I'm finished. Now also you wanna make sure that when you're doing this, you spread a really nice thin layer. I don't like to do it too thick, otherwise it can be a little bit difficult to see the color that's underneath, since with all that glitter in it, if you spread it too thick, it becomes a little bit opaque. So I just really press it against that stencil and get a nice thin layer there. And you can see that I'm adding it all over here. Now, if you just wanted to do a little portion, you could definitely blend the whole background and maybe mask off a circle die or something to create a little bit of that background. But I decided to go full in here and just do the whole thing. 
Now it doesn't take up a ton of that paste. You just have to really kind of um, spread it all around and you know push it through and then kind of spread it all around the surface and make sure that as you're doing that you're scraping over top to get more of that paste to come out on your knife. So now I'm going to lift off this stencil. This is the moment of truth here. This is the really fun part where you can see exactly what you've created. And you can really see it reflecting all those fun fall colors that we blended right underneath it. So it gives a more kind of subtle color, but I really love how it looks. And then once again, I'm wiping off my stencil there from all that paste, and you could do it a little bit um, of a more harsh cleaner there. So now I'm using this My Favorite Things stamp set. I really like this one. It's called Harvest Mouse. And I'm going to use that little mouse that's carrying those apples there. So I'm using this Nouveau Black Hybrid ink again, and I really like this because it works with so many different kinds of mediums. So here I'm using colored pencils, and I'm going to use some Gamsol too. Sometimes that can be a little bit tricky, but I like this ink for that. So I'm using these Chameleon Color Tone pencils. These are super fun. So they're dual tone kind of pencils. They've got two different ends to them. And this is super nice because it makes coloring really easy with colored pencils. So when I color, I like to start off with the lighter color, and I'm going to go in here, and just with light circular motions, I'm going to go in and kind of fill the whole area that I want to color. Now I do this really lightly because I want to be able to add on more colors and not kind of have a whole wax build up there. So you'll see I'm going around the edge, kind of really focusing my color around there, and then I'll bring in a little bit of that darker color. So I just flipped my colored pencil, and I'm going to shade in with a little bit of that darker color. Now this is super nice to have those two-tone colored pencils because the colors go super well together, so there's not really any guesswork you have to do. So here I had to decide whether my mouse was going to wear pants or not, and he decided not to. So he has a little gray bottom there too that I'm coloring in, and I'm going to shade that as well. Now with my shading, I don't like to worry about it too much. I just kind of add shading wherever anything meets. So kind of you can see around his head and his arm, I shaded around there. And then where his sweater meets his little bottom there, you can see that there's a little bit of shading underneath there. Now for this little sweater, I'm going to go in with some reddish kind of orange colors. And you can see I left a lot lighter of a spot where there was nothing there. So this adds a lot of depth and dimension. And I kind of don't really worry about shading too much. I just add it where I kind of think that it seems right. And I don't worry about any light sources or anything like that. So here, you can also kind of work with these colored pencils and add some different shading. So you can kind of play with the pressures that you apply. So if you apply a lighter pressure, you'll get a lot lighter of a color and you can kind of fill in the image like that. And if you apply a darker pressure, you can get even more shading just like that. And then I'll flip my colored pencil here and finish off the barrel with some darker brown. So once I'm done coloring all this in, I'm going to then move on to using my Gamsol here. Now you didn't need to work on all that blending if you're really going to use Gamsol. I like to do a little bit of it, but the Gamsol marker will kind of do it all for you. So this is a DIY Gamsol marker. I'll link right in the top right corner to the video that I created sharing this. I know a lot of people are always curious about it. But it's super fun. I made it out of an alcohol blending pen and just filled it with Gamsol. And this is a much easier way to color with Gamsol than using paper stumps. So I'm just going in here and coloring with the fine point of it. And in between each color, all you have to do is quickly scribble off your Gamsol and it'll get rid of all that color in there and you can move right on into the next color. So this Gamsol kind of melts that colored pencil, kind of smooths it out so it gives it a really cool, smooth colored effect once you're done with it. So I'm going into that little orange sweater there and you can really see the colored pencil kind of melts together and creates that really nice smooth color. And wherever you added that darker shadow, it will still be there and your nice shading will still stay there. So here's that fun image in the end. You can see how smooth that is. You really don't need the Gamsol, but I think it just adds a little bit of extra kind of smoothing and awesomeness to that color. And it makes it a little bit more vibrant too. So then I'm going to tape down a little circle die to there. And I stamped down the little sentiment, I pick you too. And then I'm going to, I scribbled down a little bit of brown colored pencil for his little ground there. And I'm just going to blend that out with some Gamsol. I thought he definitely needed a little place to stand. He couldn't just be floating in midair there. So I'm just blending that out using that Gamsol into my white cardstock. And this is also another thing. It really helps blend that color together into white. 
So I've added that right onto some foam tape and then I'm going to throw some Nuvo liquid adhesive onto it again. And you can see I'm adding lots of adhesive there. That's to help it stick to that glimmer paste again. And I'm just going to place it down onto my card. And you can also see I've lined this up with my grid mat just so I can get that sentiment nice and straight. And you can see when I press it down, I've got a little bit of wiggle room too since I got that liquid adhesive on it. But since I still add that foam tape, it still gives it that nice dimension. So I'll add this onto my card base then to finish it all off. And I really love how this card turned out. I love that fun background with that more subtle color in there, but you could still definitely see it with all that shimmer underneath and that fun little mouse on top. As we know, I love my critters. All right, so what'd you guys think? I hope you really enjoyed those two cards and learned a little bit more about how to add color to your glimmer paste. If you want to, please leave a comment down below letting me know which card was your favorite from today's video. I would love to chat with you all down there. And also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and also click that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this one from me. I hope you guys will have an awesome day and I'll see you very soon for another card making and crafting video. Bye!